Hello everyone, welcome to Honey Walia Shows. I'm your host Sonal Fu. Today we have my dear friend Denise Woolard with us. She uh, was a, she's a former MLA um, for Alberta. She's not only a former MLA, she has been an educationist. She was involved in teaching uh, for the last 30 years or 35 years. She is a psychologist and she has a master's in uh, education. She has a Bachelor of Arts in English. She has a professional diploma in educational psychology and a diploma in special education. You see like all are related to education and she has a vast experience in education and psychological education. So we are going to talk, out, talk about, I should be saying, and she is going to give us a uh, expertise her experience in education what is it in past what is in present and how the COVID has affected and impacted the education and student thank you Denise welcome to the show oh thank you Sunny it's so good to be here thank you for inviting me I'm really pleased thank you Denise so let's talk about like you know why don't you give us your journey like from as a teacher to a politician to, as a volunteer as a mu musician art lover tell us a little bit about I started well when I was young I went to university you're still young <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I studied English and not being having any decision or any real thoughts about what to do after I decided I would go into teaching. Once I became a teacher I got really interested in finding out how children learned, what were some of the challenges they faced, what were some of the ways that as a teacher the adult working with them could help them achieve us to the best that they could, right, their, their accomplishments. And it's a, it's a huge field and it was really interesting. Now along the way, of course, I did other things. I volunteered at our local libraries. I, um, I volunteered, when you said about musician, I'm not a musician, but I volunteered for the Edmonton Folk Festival for many years just because I really, really enjoy music. And I became a psychologist and this got my diploma in special education, again with the goal of learning more about how children learn and how, as adults, we can help them, especially in school. So that's no, thank you. Now. <laughs> no, thank you, Denise. As you know, like my whole family has been in teaching. Mm -hmm. Manju was my wife was teacher in India and then she did some teaching here in Canada too right uh, my sister she uh, my sister and brother-in-law both teach at the Wind Windsor University my mother was a teacher uh, my aunts were teachers so the whole family is in a teaching profession you're <laughs> yeah you're right in the midst of it, but a lot of teachers say exactly no and when you talk about like you know is a good thing a pro and cons mm -hmm. of surrounded by so many teachers so they, their expectations are high from you <laughs> exactly my children said the same thing yeah. so i tell manju sometimes you know you were teacher in school not here so mm -hmm. don't discipline but you know it doesn't change so when we talk about you know teaching as my first question comes in my head or I would like to ask you you have taught you are, you were involved and you have taught you have involved in the education from last 35 years mm -hmm. what changes you see you know I have to be honest I, I have been very pleased with most of the changes I've seen over time. I was going to say that one of the things I really, really liked, and I've thought a lot about this as being an MLA, is every fall in October, we would have a week that was read-in week, we called it. And the MLAs and other elected officials were invited to read with children in the schools in, the, in their area. And that was absolutely fantastic and one of the things it did for me was kind of give me an idea of what was going on in our local schools and I was just so pleased and, and you know get to know the children a little bit and the teachers and find out and, and it was by asking children to ask questions about me you know what about government about anything they pleased gave me a good idea that the kids were still uh, thinking and asking and wondering and learning so it was all very reassuring the cons I have to say nowadays or right now that I've been very concerned with some of the 
things like the cuts in budgets. I am very concerned for children now, number one with COVID, number two with the government budget cuts that we are seeing. So those are, I haven't been in schools in the last couple of years and that concerns me a lot. No, thank you, Denise, for bringing this topic. We are I'm going to ask you very specific questions on that and how you feel the pro cons impact, not only on education, but also on students. Mm -hmm. And so it's basically, I think it's like, it's a big triangle. When we talk about education, we talk about students, we talk about the parents, we talk about society, but then also the most important thing is how it's going to impact or affect the future of Canada, how it's going to affect and impact of the humanity. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask you this question, but then it's also related to one of your degree which you have done. As I mentioned, my family was involved in teaching profession, my mother, my aunts, uh, my sister, brother-in-law, Manju, my wife. I always learned they have done Bachelor of Education. Mm -hmm. Now you have done not only Bachelor of Education, you have done Educational Psychology also. How different they are. Could you tell us a little bit more about it? Oh, that's, that's interesting. So my Bachelor's degree was in Arts, but then I did my Education courses in a separate program. So I didn't get a Bachelor of Education, I did Education courses and then I did the Masters of Educational Psychology. In the Masters level with education, you can do it in different things like in specialties, educational administration, educational psychology, all different areas. And psychology <coughs> meant that what I wanted to do was to find out more about how I could determine what struggles children were having, what was causing them, and what we could do uh, what we could do to help them. So when we talk about the struggle, because Canada is a is a country where we we have people from all different parts of the world, mm -hmm. and like you know, we came to Canada also. And did I speak English? Yes, but you know, no one will understand how I'm speaking because of the accent, how you speak, and even English being a second language. So that is also part of the psychology or the education system. Good question. Um, it's interesting, before I came here, before I was an MLA, I did some of my teaching, six, over six years of it, in northern Alberta, and I taught children who never, who just spoke no English before they went to school. So I had experience in working with, with children for whom English was their second language. That's not part of psychology, but it's really good to understand what processes they're going through and how, again, to help children develop a good facility, you know, be able to understand and use English just because that's the language they need to know for work, for jobs, for higher education. So you have done a different degrees or diploma. So one of your diploma is a special education. Yes. So when we are talking about the psychology, I'm just, uh, I'm under, like, I may be wrong, but it's a special education is related to the kids who have a challenges like mm -hmm. FASD, ADHD, um, is that kind of a special education yep. or is something different? No, that is it. It's all the different ways in which children struggle. So uh, one year as teaching junior high, I had a student, I had a couple of students with specific learning disabilities, dyslexia, mm -hmm. very capable learners, but reading was a challenge for them. You know, very smart, but reading was a struggle. I had a student who had um, an intellectual disability, so he was struggling. It didn't mean he wouldn't learn things, but he needed a little more time. A uh, student with, and there were a couple of different things you don't, you know, we hear about OCD. Yes. Yes. You know, obsessive compulsive disorder. Yes, because, you know, we have been fostering and uh, we have adopted a child to, we are blessed to have in our family. And we were, I was involved with CASA also, and then we have done some studies exactly. with them. So I know a little bit. So in that way, can we involve when we go to the children's school? Do you, can you talk about an education? system um, naming or tagging you know is a normal child is a foster child or is an adopted child it does exist how was your experience on that that's a good question generally 
if there's any labels, it should be only for, we'd almost call it scientific use, for writing reports and stuff to do information. The labels don't need to be any part of, of the child's world, right? The last thing a child <coughs> needs is a label that they might see as being negative or making them stand out, right? We don't want that. And as for being an adopted or not adopted, again, the adults might know about it, but there's no need to be having it having it be a, a thing that will everybody will know about it. We don't need that. And like you know, like education system, we have a lot of people. It studies have been done about the bullying. Yes. Yeah. And the kids, you know, how do you as a psychologist, as a special education person or expert, how do you, my question will be how you would guide mm -hmm. um, or how do you inform the parents to be aware of the bullying mm -hmm. and to be once it's happening, how to, what they can do or what they should do? That is a really good question. I wish there was easy answers. This class I was talking to you about with the, a number of children with different challenges, uh, we even got a new child out from a different school who came to us with Tourette syndrome. And What's a Tourette syndrome? Tourette syndrome is one where the child, especially when it's stressful, will make noises. And in junior high, you can imagine that that makes other children aware of them and they're a perfect target for bullying. So one of the challenges working with this class and this student was to help other kids understand the differences and to help them understand that the less they responded, the better, the more positive they were, the better off the other person would be and it would be in the long run better for them because they'd see the other person as a possible friend, not as somebody to make fun of. But bullying is a big thing. I'm not going to say it's easy to overcome it, but all we can do as adults is, is try to help children develop empathy, understand, you know, how would you feel if you were in that person's shoes? What do you think they're feeling right now when people make fun of them? You know, we, it, it's a long process. There's a, um, there's a program, and I can't even remember what, what it's called, but, but it's done in some schools where they have a parent with a young child come into a class on a regular basis with the baby, with their child, to have the kids in the class, the students, be able to see, to, to see this child and start to understand a person who can't talk and who can't say anything and who can't do anything for themselves, why it's the responsibility of people around them to help them and support them and to kind of develop that capacity in children. So in your teaching, like 35 years of teaching experience, have you dealt with any of these kind of uh, scenarios? Bullying and things like that, yeah, I have. So how do you dealt with them? Um, you, you know, a lot of times you deal with the, you deal with you help, you try to encourage, try to help the child develop a sense of, a better sense of self-esteem. Like, what are your skills? What are the things you do well? Let's, let's talk about those, right? But you also want to talk to the children that are doing the bullying or work with them on what are some of the effects of their actions to try to develop a, a, a sense, a belief that what they do has consequences, right? You did mention, like uh, Denise, in the beginning, like you know, your uh, the COVID. Mm -hmm. So the COVID has has changed everyone's life. Yes, it's not has affected, impacted our present. It is going to affect or impact our future also. How do you think? Because I tell you, I have a young kids too. Mm -hmm. I have a friends who have a young kids. Some are going to school and some are not going to school. Some they're doing online learning. Yeah. For personally me, when we go to school, we are not only learning, but we are also learning the social skills. Yes. So as a teacher or as an education person or psychologist, um, 
how what you think it has affected or impacted the students and education system that is such a good question and it's so broad i i'm not directly in the education but i read i read the reports about how people are doing what i have gathered is that children from grade 1 to grade 6 or kindergarten to grade 6 do much better when they're at school personally because at home they're like you said they're not developing social skills it's hard for them to feel engaged, involved in their learning because sometimes they will miss something, uh, not hear something or not pay attention. They're, little, they're young children and they will lose track of what's going on so when they're at school they do better. Junior high and senior high students by and large are doing okay with online learning because they're older and they can pay attention for longer and they can work more independently. But the younger children, uh, what I've read is that they're not getting, they're behind the grade level in, in their on average in learning. Now, the, one of the things I wanted to say right off the bat was, I mean, I'm absolutely and always have been really proud of Alberta's public schools. Our education system is great. Our, our achievements score high in the world, much better than many other countries. And, this is something we're proud of justifiably. So when we see some losses like this, we worry about them and how are we going to make them up when children are coming out of like grade three, basically having missed half of grade three, then what are we going to do about it? We can't just say, okay, we'll assume you've learned it, let's move on to grade four. Assumption we, is not good. That's right. Um, so the sooner we can get the elementary students back into classes, the better for them, absolutely. And when you were talking earlier about education being the, the foundation of everything we do, that is absolutely true. Because we are building future on that, absolutely. you know, that the kids, like the children or the young generation who are going to kindergarten, they are going, like, we are in our late 50s, mm -hmm. you know, we are, we have to ensure, like, we have the transition is there. That's right. And they will be our future. Like mm -hmm. they, it's not, they will not be only our future, they will be future of Canada, they will be future of the world, they will be future of the humanity. So that's my thing, like, you know, the base Absolutely. is there, the basement is, you know, the base is there, and we are going to build the, mm -hmm. the future of our building on that stone. Exactly. You did mention about the budget cuts. Mm -hmm. And you did mention the Alberta education is the world class. Like yes. we have the highest ranking system. We have highest rates of education. You know, we are very we are very high. Yeah. How it's going to, in your opinion, how it has impacted? Did it throw us back or? I I am very concerned, especially since I I'm someone who has worked a lot with with students who are who are struggling in school. And I've seen some real accomplishments. My children, my students, I can't say children now, with their learning disabilities, their reading struggles, by the time they got out of grade nine, we had them so they were able to ask for help. And I said, that's a huge step. And when we made arrangements with the high school before they went to high school to get help for reading, and they all graduated. So it shows with some extra support how you how well you can help students through school one of the things that's happened with the budget cuts is a number of the supports that we could we had not just with the NDP government with the PC government before that were were helps for younger children the earlier their help the easier things are so we had something called the puff program that's a, a support for the very young children, like kindergarten and pre-kindergarten, to get them prepared for grade one, but also educational assistance. So, you know, you have a child who's struggling with reading, you can have them do every day a 15-minute read with just an individual, not a group, hmm. because they don't want people laughing at them if they read too slowly, right? Um, and th a lot of these things have been cut and that is going to have implications down the road. You know, you get a four-year-old with, I've seen a four-year-old with quite a severe speech problem. If they get help when they're four and five, by the time they get to grade one, a lot of times they're not noticeably behind other children their age. If they don't get that specialized help, they will be 
and then they'll be struggling right from the word go. And a child who's struggling right off the bat is going to get discouraged quickly. And if they get discouraged, they often they quit trying. No, that's a good thing. You know, once you start falling apart or falling behind, you go more back, 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 that's back. That's right. So <clears throat> you did mention NDP, PC, uh, you were former MLA. Mm -hmm. What your future is, what you are planning, what your plans are? I would like to keep on working as an educational psychologist. So I've, I've, I've got some information out to people. There's people in the in this area that I have told about. The problem right now is that the schools, the school divisions don't have very much money for educational psychologists right at the moment. They had to lay off speech language therapists and occupational therapists and psychologists when the budget cuts came in. So I'm kind of waiting to see how things are going to go, but I'm very interested in keeping on. Being an educational psychologist is, is so rewarding to find out what is happening with the child. Why are they experiencing struggles and, and trying to help the parents and teachers learn how to help the child, how to best help them. So are you still involved in politics, uh, Denise? I volunteer, uh, yep, I, ke I keep volunteering with constituency associations because there's a lot of things I can do to help. I can, I can phone, help fundraise, keep things going. Thank you, thank you, Denise. Denise, in the end, as an educationist um, or psychologist, I, a person who has a vast experience in education, what the, last, what the message would you like to give it to the parents? To co cope, with, cope with the present situation. You know, I would really encourage, and I know it's a frustrating time for parents, but I'd encourage parents to talk to, talk to the teachers, talk to the administrators at their school, especially if they've got a child who's struggling or if they have any questions. Talk to their elected officials, all of them. Their MLAs, their school board trustees, everybody they can think of about the importance of education and how important public edu good public education is and the need to support it, you know, give adequate resources to the system so that our young population in Alberta are going to be able to, to do as well the best that they possibly can. It's going to be good for everyone, better, best for the province, best for everyone. So be vocal and be a good supporter. Of, what do we say? Be a cheerleader for your child. Thank you. That's a, such a fantastic thing to say, Denise. Be a cheerleader for your child. Take initiative, take ownership. Thank you, Denise, for joining us at the Honey Valia Show. Thanks a lot for giving us your vast experience on education and your expertise. Thank you, Sunil, and I've enjoyed this enormously, and uh, I hope people are, are benefited from it. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Uh, thank you, everyone. Um, as we are talking, as I mentioned earlier too, please keep watching Honey Valia shows. It's not only in one language, it's in different language. And we are not only covering one topic, which is so, we are doing a vast topic. So if you have any suggestions or recommendation which you would like to see, or want us to bring the expert and talk about it, please let us know. Keep watching Honey Valia show, and I'm your host, Sonal Fool, taking a leave from you till we meet again.